Is your heart still broken? Yes, every day, every day. And it will be for every day. Um, she is and was the love of my life. Um, she was a big part, not only of your, obviously, your personal life, but she was a big part of your professional life. Sure. Everybody remembers her role on the show. How has the show been without her? Um, different, um, but really not so much different maybe for somebody listening. Different from this standpoint that up until, like I was telling you very recently, I've really not been very happy. I mean, and it's hard to come in and pretend that you are that everything's okay and hey look how about american idol last night that's crazy did you see that show that's nuts i mean i go home most nights and i'm sad i go home and i sit down and all i see is reminders of the way everything was i'm not being a martyr it's just the way that it is and it was it's been very hard to come in so from that standpoint i don't know if people listening can catch up in my mind i think i've sucked because i've been so off and mentally so not here, not that I've been phoning it in, but you know, it's like it, for a while it didn't really matter to me. I came in out of obligation to, first of all, I wanted my son to know you don't quit. You never, no matter what happens, you don't quit. That's why I went back to work three weeks after this happened. You know, my life didn't end. I mean, it's awful, but my life didn't end. So I had to show him that. There are people that work here that count on me. I'm here for them too. And getting back was was hard, and it's not so hard now. It's not so hard now because it's been nine months. And my the way I think about it, it's like that's almost as much time as it took for Bart to be born. Mm -hmm. That was, and that came to me recently. Uh, and I I think while well, I think of Frida all the time, I very rarely dream about her. But I have dreamt about her recently, and I know she is happy wherever she is, and I know she wants me to just. Be happy. If she had one thing that was her mantra with me, it was always, she had something called the Jolly Directive. I would talk about this on the air. But she'd just say, you know, how can you not happier? Because I'm just, you know, a cynical SOB. And she would always put up signs, be jolly, be happy. And, I, and what's sad is now I'm probably going to be able to. Now, not because she's gone, but because... She's gone, and the one thing she would want me to do is not mope around and not quit my job and just sit on a beach somewhere and, and be a loser. Yeah. And about her being on the show, nobody really knows what her role was. Her role was, yeah, she was on the show, and she was great. But she would be my real-life wife, and we would talk about real things that happened, if it was good, bad, or indifferent. Um, what people don't know about her is that in a way, some ways larger than Mike. She was my partner. That um, anybody at work will tell you that during our show, I would call Frida during a break. She's the one person that I knew would tell me honestly if something was good or bad, and I trusted her opinion. Now, were there, th there were things that we did that I knew she wouldn't like. She's a woman. She didn't like nudity. She didn't like the flatulence. She didn't like when I went real deep into our personal life, but I would tell her, baby, that's the stuff you don't understand. I know I'm right about that. Tell me about this other thing. When we had Tom Sizemore on the phone, was I a big jerk with him or did I come off as okay? Did I, you know, I would call her and get that feedback from her all the time. And, and she supported me all the way through. I mean, when I, when I met her, I was bankrupt. <laughs> I mean, I was doing great in radio, but I was just, my head was up my butt with money, and yeah. uh, she, she supported me all the way through. My mom passed away one year ago this month, and I know that that made me a different guy. Um, are you a different person because yes. of her? Yes, yes, because of losing her, because the best part of Frida has morphed into me. Now, you wouldn't know that to listen to the radio, um, but in the real me, the one that's not on the radio, um, I'm finding more and more as I live my life, I'm doing things the Frida way. The way that I used to give her crap about, I'm doing it. Example. Here's a good example. Drinking. Frida would say to me, I would come home at night and have a drink every single night. And she would say to me, don't you think that that's a little out of hand, you're having a drink every night? And I would always say, baby, come on. I have one drink, it's my one vice that I got left, let me have it. 
She wasn't busting my chops. She was just bringing up the point of view, the way that Frida lived her life, everything in moderation. And I would always say to her, yes, everything in moderation, including moderation. But <laughs> what I found is now that she's gone, I come home at night and I think to myself, you know what, I'm really not going to get a good night's sleep if I have a drink tonight. I really don't need to have a drink every single night when I get home. Not that this is all about booze or anything. Uh, I'll give you another example. Frida was exceedingly polite and friendly to everybody, no matter who she ran into. I have zero patience for idiots. Zero patience. Um, I'm a real jerk like that. Somebody comes to my door to sell me something, you know. Some guy's coming around with a lawn care place. I don't even say goodbye. I just say, boom, used to be door, slam, goodbye. I don't do that now. I will take the time now to look someone in the eye and say, hi, how are you? I um, also have more patience. I have a lot more patience. I don't know how this happened. Well, you know, you said in one article I read that you were a lost soul when you met her. And that made me wonder if after going through this, maybe you would be a lost soul again. But you seem to be saying no. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I was lost until I found Frida. Uh, Frida, that Jive Jerry Maguire thing, did complete me. She really did, from the first time I met her. It was yin and yang. It took me, the, when, she went, when she met me 27 years ago, I was a stupid, dumb, half-cocked kid. And now I'm a, a dumb, half-cocked man. But I'm very different because of her, because of her guidance, because every time over the 25 years we were married, and even before that we were dating, when I would be going down the wrong road, whether it be a career choice or whatever I was doing, she always supported me. She would always say, no, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. Always gentle, always loving, but at the same time, she had a power over me to change me. I wanted to please her. I wanted her to be proud of me. And I didn't want her to be proud of me for the amount of money I made or what I did. I want her to be proud of me as a man. And probably the best thing that she ever said is about our son. That that's the one job that she could say, without a doubt, that I did 100% was raising her son. How, how is Brian? He's doing okay. I don't want to say he's doing great because I'm not doing great. But I think he's doing as well as can be expected. He's back at school. Grades are good. He's doing okay with his friends. He had a very rough first semester after this happened. And I partially blame myself. I made him go right back to school. And I said, you know, this is the way we do things. This is the way mom would do it. We go back. This is the way we do it in our family. Um, and that semester was not a good semester for him. But he's turned it around now, and he's doing much better. Are you doing much better? Yes. Yes, I am. I really am. Um, I miss her. I mean, what can I say? I'm going to miss her every day of my life. Even if I happen to meet somebody else, you know, which is idiotic to think about. But if I do, because I don't, I don't plan on my life ending. I'm only 47. I'll never find anybody like her again. So I'll miss her every single day. If you could say something to her now, which is what we always think about when you lose somebody, you know, I'd like to, what would you say? Or what would you hope she'd say? The great thing about us is I don't think, we, my mother-in-law even told me on the night before Frida was died, before she died, we went out to eat together in Ocean City and we had my mother-in-law watching the dogs. And when we left the house, she made, a compliment. she made a comment that night when we got back. She said, you two really look like you did when you first started dating. That that's how happy we were. Um, and your question about what would you say to her and what would I, it's already been said. It had been said, I must have told her in any given day 50 times, I love you. So much so that she would say to me sometimes, okay, I know you do. <laughs> yeah, not at all. But her too. I mean, and there was not really one day that I didn't tell her 
admits all the arguing and everything else, how much I appreciated her and, and her with me. So I would want her just to know I'm doing okay. You know, don't worry about me. I, I got it handled. And I'm sure she would say to me, I knew you would. 